All right, good evening, everybody. This is a special meeting of the Downers Grove Grade School District 58 Board of Education here on Monday, September 27th, 2021, at 7 p.m. here at Downers Grove Village Hall. The meeting is being live streamed for the public of the, on the Village of Downers Grove YouTube channel. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Joshi. Here. Member Ellis. Here. Member Hannes. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Olchik. Here. Member Weiner. Here. Member Hughes. Here. All right, as we always do, we're going to go ahead and kick this off tonight with the flag salute. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Justin. All right, this is now an opportunity for the members of the audience to share public comment with the board, but it is not intended to be a time for members of the public to engage in a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public comment tonight may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff uh, as appropriate. I only have uh, two cards tonight. Is that accurate? All right, if we only have two people that want to speak tonight, uh, we can go up to six minutes. And so, the because uh, I've allocated up to 30 minutes here tonight, we ask that you keep your comments to the six minute limit to allow everyone an opportunity to speak. At this time, we have received just these two cards. So we will ask that each person who submitted a card to please come to the podium, state their name and attendance area, and provide public comment. Uh, is it Doug Y? So I've never gotten involved in politics whatsoever in anywhere I've lived. I've never really seen the need, never really seen desire to. But when I started hearing about Longfellow and what they were gonna do to that beautiful open space and turn it into McMansions, I decided to get involved. I worked with my neighbors, worked with my friends, we started to push. Unfortunately, every time we said something, it was, well, the committee's already said so. We've already had this community. They've already approved it. Well, I don't have any kids in any schools, but I live next to that building. So where was I supposed to know when that public comment was ready to go? When I should have stood up? If you weren't on the D58 newsletter, you had no idea what was going on. I have learned from the Facebook, and I learned from nextdoor.com what was going on. As soon as I got involved, it was too late. I started looking at the numbers, looking at everything else going on. Being an accountant as a background, the numbers started looking fishy, everything started looking a little off, and then I started saying, well wait, let's have a conversation about this. And nothing, no responses, dead silence, nothing. I'm here to say what we're doing is bad small town politics, it is the worst kind of politics. We elected you and we will vote you out. There are hundreds of signs around Downers Grove. Those signs that support Longfellow those signs will soon turn to um, do not approve the 2022 tax, the new tax levy. So that tax levy that you've had, or that you're planning for 2022, uh, the Longfellow groups and all the different loosely groups, because it's not just one group or two groups, there's about three different groups that are involved, will turn our attention to getting our neighbors and friends to vote no on the 2022 tax increase. You may have sold Longfellow, but you will not get that tax raise next year in 2022. A little short shot of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Julia. Okay. My name's Julia. You've, you've seen me up here before. I'm here with my wife, Lynn, and my daughters. We've lived in this community for 34 years. We have been faithful, unstoppable proponents for this district up until tonight. Lynn, while our kids were in school, was active at the school, in the PTA, was PTA president, countless volunteer on every committee out there. I have been a volunteer for this district for over 20 years, starting with the legislative committee. I was part of the, the, the committee that started the foundation. I filed the foundation now for profit application. To this day, I've been filing the annual tax return for the foundation. All volunteer work. 
I, I'm having a hell of a time reconciling how I go forward volunteering and assisting a district that just doesn't listen. Oh, and by the way, I was on the board. I was board president. Um, I don't. I don't know how, as a citizen, we could support you guys anymore, and received anything less in how you guys approached this sale. Um, you talked about how you engaged the community, but you knew, and you knew it. You ignored the one group that should have been part of this from day one. You knew that. Marshall and I have long history involvement. We've been part of board meetings where this has been talked about before. We were at the February 2020 meeting, and several of you came up to us and said, yeah, we'll keep you informed. Nothing. We found out in March or February 2021 when this thing was moving forward. You formed the committee, the, the citizen, I don't know, what, whatever you called it. The decision had already been made. We weren't told that when that committee, we were asked to be on the committee. It was in the second meeting. I mean, the, the discussion stopped when we were trying to promote some discussion about the numbers, and I was told we agreed to disagree, and that was it. It was shut off at that point. I, I don't know. The obtuse nature and how you approach this is just stunning. It's mind-boggling. So that brings us to the time. You got bids at 2 o'clock. How many of you were able to look at those bids, read them thoroughly, and formulate your opinion about them? Okay. In a bid process, normal like this, you take a bid, you review it, you put together questions, you ask the bidders these questions to make sure you have a full understanding of it so you can incorporate any sort of contingencies, questions, issues into the sales contract. Um, I can only assume you've read the bids because you won't answer my questions, but I hope you prepared some questions, asked those questions, and got some follow-up on the questions. There were four bids, uh, three of them sort of similar, one of them way out of range, so obviously there was something unusual about the bid, probably contingency. But again, I just know. As we have asked over and over, Stand back, take your time on this. You already have your lease. You, you have a, an opportunity to sit back and make sure you get this right. But I, I just can't see how that's happening. And you know, you, 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 you got to ask more questions, guys. You, you do. You, there's never any questions. You guys get up here, you vote, and it looks like that's just going to be your thing tonight. Just going to vote anyway. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. All right, that brings us up to the action portion of tonight's meeting. Up first is the award of a contract for the sale of Longfellow School. Is there a motion to award the contract for the sale of Longfellow School to McNaughton Development, Inc. for the amount of $4,155,000? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? I think we want to, I don't know, Todd, do you want to walk us through a couple of <coughs> some of the final steps here that we've been going through? Yes, good evening. I'll just um, quickly go through... Uh, the process in how we have put out information uh, on the bid piece. Uh, we have, as the board is aware, uh, you know, the, the, the property had put out to the board approved the resolution over the summer uh, with a higher number. Uh, that did not receive any response for bids. We, uh, the board then approved a uh, similar resolution with a smaller number of $3 million uh, at the August meeting with this date as uh, the date to uh, approve uh, that, that, that process. <coughs> in that time, we have gone through and made sure we have put out all the information we could find, ascertain work on for that property. Um, you know, we took in some of the input uh, from uh, what we called builders and put prospective developers as to what information they needed in the previous one 
demolition of property, asbestos reports, such. We put all of that out there. We had an ALTA survey um, out there as well. The village uh, had come to us and said they were getting a lot of questions from potential developers on the property, and they proposed a format that uh, they would tell developers as they approach the village to send us the questions. We would then send them to the village. We would then take those responses, and we would put them back out on our website in the same spot where all of the resolution, the information was. We have uh, done that for uh, the last several weeks, mm -hmm. and I believe um, the last posting was Thursday uh, that we even had some follow-up questions um, from earlier questions, including the the uh, uh, questions from the developer that had the the high bid uh, that was submitted today. Uh, we have uh, that has worked very well, I think, because has made sure that everyone who's interested in that uh, in that process has kept to that site, and we've been very uh, careful to make sure everyone received that information at the same time and updating as quickly as we could. Uh, the village has been extremely helpful in turning around uh, and responding to those questions um, as quickly as possible within a day or so. And so we appreciate the, all their efforts. Um, that resulted in uh, four um, proposals or four bids that we received today at 2 o'clock. Obviously the, the highest amount we sent that uh, for review, for legal review, uh, and that came back and thus you have the recommendation uh, from us based on on that process. And with that, are there any questions? Any specific questions for, for Todd, for Kevin? Mm. Yeah, I'll ask a question. Uh, <clears throat> as you look through the bids, um, anything particular about the one that was the highest bid that gives you any pause or concerns <coughs> about the process going forward and being able to complete the sale? We. Um, with any bid, obviously, you know, when you have that winning uh, bid, whether it's a purchase service or, in this case, uh, someone who's purchasing, uh, you want, you know, we, we quickly, you know, the person did not leave the room. We asked them, you know, have you gone through everything? What is, you know, where are you at with the review? Um, you know, we felt good in the sense that this is a firm that has asked questions and then asked follow-up questions through that Q&A process that I've noted out um, because in that, I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of it that's development based with how the city or the village is going to adjust and deal with things that is not necessarily involvement to us, uh, but what it, what the development piece is. And, and so, um, you know, they, um, and, and, and the other piece was one of our bidder, one of the potential bidders had pointed out to us our quote for demolition did not include infill and C. Uh, that has a different, that has an additional cost. And, you know, my question is, are you aware that our quote in there, you know, doesn't have those things? And, he, you know, yes, they were, and this is a, this is a f large company. Um, you know, we felt good because one, it's a known developer a larger firm, and they have been engaged in this process. It wasn't someone we had never heard of until today, which we would have given pause and um, and concern. Um, and they were aware of what our quote was, and they had had one of their demolition people on site to inspect the property and go through the building. Uh, as we made that aware, you know, developers aware that that was a possibility for any of them if they so wished and many of them took us up on that and uh, you know we, we had uh, people coming in and looking through uh, so they were comfortable with their bid uh, compared you know when where they're at um, and with the work that they have done to date uh, and all of the information that we've provided we've worked to provide as much or more information, understanding, um, and trying to eliminate those questions after having gone through that first process over the summer. 
and taken feedback from firms as to what they were looking for. So that's what makes gives us you know, the, the process and making sure that we've given out that information, you know, makes us comfortable with the recommendation. I think to, to piggyback off of that too, one of the other things that we felt comfortable with and speaking with the village this afternoon after we received the bid, this is a builder who's currently building on a large scale in Downers Grove um, off of 55th Street by Jefferson in the Hillcrest neighborhood, Jefferson in, in Burbank. Uh, they currently have a subdivision of 10 lots that they're building on and so similar project, um, you know, on the south side of town is occurring now. We asked the village, are you experiencing difficulty? Are they meeting their deadlines? Are they adhering to everything? And the village reported all positive things to say about this particular building. Thank you. That was going to be my question. If there was a, if they were, if they worked in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, they have a current project right now. They have a current project right now called Copperleaf in uh, Southern Downers Grove. I drove by there today. <laughs> yeah, and actually on their website they have a lot of their recent developments mm -hmm. outlined. One of the things we did do after the last bid was we went through, and did some just quick web searching. And then reached out to any builders and you know that may have missed, um, you know, the newspaper uh, postings of you know the property, um, you know, to expand that uh, out. Uh, and they were one that we we you know contacted, and certainly because they were building in Downers Grove. So that was the other focus. Is we wanted someone who was familiar with the village in the area. Great. Did you receive any interest in bidders outside builders? As you know, one of my items was to remove from the resolution a requirement that it be residential builder. Um, we did received you receive anything <laughs> in we, the Q and A that was for the bid itself. Interested bidders. We um, we would send it up. To, you know, people know there's updates. Um, Ken. Uh, Kensington School, uh, which is the preschool, the brick preschools, uh, they had several times called and asked um, and had interest in the property. Um, however, that would require zoning change, and we explained that that was not something we were, you know, um, we were <laughs> if they per wanted to purchase at, you know, and put a bid in and then work that process, that was up to them, but it was not something that we were interested in. Uh, <coughs> to my knowledge, they are the only uh, non-residential um, potential, potential bidder that was looking at the property. Again, you know, we, we post the information on the website. We don't know who's going and pulling the information. Right, all right. You know, so, um, but, uh, you know, uh, that was the only one that I know of that had asked and inquired about the property. Thank you. Okay. Melissa, please cover. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to award the contract for the sale of Longfellow School to McNaughton Development Inc. for the amount of four million one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. Next up on our agenda tonight is there a motion to approve the list of bills as presented? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? I, I don't know there. Okay. All right. Let's please go. Wrong. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the list of bills as presented. Uh, last up is the surplus equipment. Is a laminator, 63 file cabinets, couches, and a desk. Is there a motion to designate the laminator, 63 file cabinets, couches, and a desk listed in the attached memo as surplus equipment? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion on that? Melissa, please call roll. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. 
Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to designate a laminator, 63 file cabinets, couches, and a desk listed in the attached memo as surplus equipment. All right. That concludes the meeting tonight. So is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. Melissa, please call roll. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchick. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. The meeting is now adjourned at 7.20 p.m.